Today's project is a little bit of a gamble. I'm only about 50% certain that what I'm installing today will be useful. I'm going to put this in. This is an accumulator tank for the water system. And there are a lot of videos available on YouTube explaining what an accumulator tank is and why you would need one. However, installing it in the Revel is a little tricky because it's a relatively small camper van and there's not a lot of room putting this tank in. But first let me quickly explain why I'm putting the tank in and what problem it is supposed to solve. The Revel has a very decent water pump and if I'm turning the faucet on all the way, it starts pumping, obviously. And it runs continuously to provide a nice and steady water stream out of the faucet. And now I'm turning on the faucet only a tiny little bit. Did you hear how the pump shuts off and on and off and on quite a bit? This is kind of expected because the pump always runs at the same speed and it would produce more water than what's coming out of the faucet. So the only way to regulate the water stream is by short cycling the pump. And that is something this accumulator tank is supposed to help with. It has a reservoir, an accumulator to provide pressurized water to the system even when the pump is not running. And with that, it is supposed to cut down on this short cycle time. And I can understand in theory how it is supposed to work and what benefits this accumulator tank will provide. However, it almost sounds too good to be true. A little bit like on the snake oil side of things, right? And that's why I said initially I'm only about 50% certain it will actually provide some benefit. Well, I'm going to put it in now and then we can compare before and after. And the good news is that the accumulator tank can be installed anywhere in the water system downstream from the water pump. So I'm putting it in here under the pantry area. So let me try to fly in with the camera here. In this area up here, I cannot really point to it right now, there's a little bit of room and the, the tank will fit in here just nicely. And of course I will have easy access to the cold water line, which is one of these two white hoses. They go up to the faucet. And also, if I want, I can tie into the PEX lines here on the floor. I should also mention that the tank can be installed in a few different ways. It can sit in line. So basically you could cut the water line here and here and then replace that portion of the water line with the tank. Or you would cap off one end of the tank and then just tee into an existing water line on the other side. And it doesn't really matter with which side. All that matters is that the tank sits downstream of the water pump and is somehow connected to the water line. And here's how I plan to install it. I cut a piece of plywood and then this aluminum bar here. I'm attaching the piece of plywood to the back wall here to stiffen it up a little bit. And then I can run the aluminum bar horizontally over here. And that gives me something to hang the accumulator tank from. I'm going to attach it to the aluminum bar and then it will sit roughly in this area here. Well, at least that's the plan. It was a bit of a struggle, but I finally got the accumulator tank installed. It is not connected yet. I still need to tie it into the water line. The cold water line is here and I need to cut in a T and then connect the bottom of the T to the inlet of the water tank over here. It is currently wrapped into some sort of felt just to protect the port and stop any water from leaking out. I pressure tested the tank earlier, so it's a little wet on the inside. The accumulator tank requires a little bit of maintenance. Every once in a while I need to get to that Schrader valve here at the top and adjust the internal pressure. And as you can see, 
with the bottom shelf of the pantry removed, there's plenty of access to the tank and to, well, a lot of other things down in this little cavity. While I was in here, I took care of a few other things. Here, I wrapped some felt around the hot water pipe so the crimp rings of the cold water pipe no longer touch it. And for up here, I made a little bracket to better secure the cables. And I also relocated these two relays. They were laying on the floor just with all the other cables and I moved them up here and attached them to the back wall. One of them is for the macerator. And the other one is for the running board lights. It is connected to the PSM module and it makes sure that you're not driving away with these lights turned on. Well, that's the point of no return. I'm going to cut the water line. And before I do anything else, I'm sliding these crimp rings over the hoses. And then hopefully I can put the T-fitting on and get it crimped down. So the T-fitting is on there. It was easier than I thought, but crimping it down might be a challenge. And before I turn the water back on and check for leaks and really test this whole thing, I need to adjust the internal pressure of that accumulator tank. I think the manual says it needs to be set to the shut-off pressure of the water pump. And I'm thinking this is somewhere around 30 psi, so I'm going to set it to that. And I'm not using my electric tire inflator. I think it would pump it up way too quickly. So instead, I'm using a bicycle pump. Well, that's 30, 31. Well, the moment of truth. The water pump is on and I purged the air from the system. And the first good news is that I don't see or can feel any leaks. I leave this area open there for a bit so I can check back for leaks a little later. But of course the real question is, what does the accumulator tank do? Does it help in any way? So let's find out. First let me quickly play the video clip from what it was before. With the water fully turned on and with just a little water stream coming out of the faucet. As before, I'm placing the second microphone down there by the water pump so you can hear it running. So first, let me turn it on full blast. So what I immediately noticed is that the pump does not immediately kick in when the water faucet is opened and it runs a little after it has been closed. So I guess that's kind of expected, right? First the tank provides pressure and then when the faucet is turned off, the pump fills the tank back up. And test number two, with the faucet turned on only a little. So here the pump didn't turn on at all. So I guess all the pressure was provided by the accumulator tank. So now let me turn it on again a little and let it run for a while. Now the pump is turning on and it's turning on continuously for a while. Wow, this is awesome. I didn't really expect it working that good. It's for sure not snake oil. So if I'm turning on the water faucet just a little, initially the pump doesn't turn on at all. 
when I leave it running just a little, then eventually the tank is depleted and then the pump kicks on and it provides the water flow, but it also fills the tank back up. So it runs, it doesn't short cycle, it runs for quite a bit to fill the tank back up while the water is steadily running. And then the pump shuts off while the water is still running from what the accumulator tank provides and then the, the whole cycle repeats. So the pump still goes on and off, but not nearly as often as it did without the tank. Let me play the two video clips from before and after side by side and I'm trying to visualize when the pump is turning on. The accumulator tank only cost about $25 maybe 30, and I maybe spend another $5 on fittings and crimp rings and so on. I did have a PEX crimping tool though, so I did not have to buy that. And the installation wasn't that hard at all. There's plenty of space below the pantry for the accumulator tank, and really the only challenge was to get the crimping tool in because it has these wide handles and they need to get extended and then crimped down. They do make smaller tools for tighter spaces, so I guess I need to pick that one up next. Anyway, for about $35 and a few hours of work, I'm really pleased with the results. I can highly recommend this upgrade. Well, and that's all I had for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.